most of the time when you see videos such as this you hear the common cultural shock of international students when they move to the uk um the pda the fact that um, things work the fact that people tend to be on their own but for me um, my own cultural shocks were different because i kind of grew up watching western movies i grew up watching american movies british and so i knew a lot of the things that people deem as cultural shocks so me getting there was not those things that people claim or talk about as cultural shocks were not cultural shocks to me now in this video i'm going to share the uncommon ones that the people don't talk about so if you want to hear my own um view of cultural shock moving as an international student in the uk then please keep on watching everybody know i'm a visual yeah i kill it cold like a criminal I'm everybody's type but nobody can deny Yes, you know I get it, get it, nah, nah, nah. Hi guys, my name is Omomi A.K. Petit Diva and I am a University of Nottingham alumni and also a Developing Solutions Scholarship Award winner. In this series, I talk about everything um, concerning international students in the UK. Tips and tricks to make sure that your stay in the UK is as legal as possible, as smooth as possible, and tips and tricks to help you make more money at, when you're working as a student. How to get admission without having any problem, and everything gen in general that concerns international students in the UK. So if you like videos such as this, Please don't forget to subscribe by clicking on that red button that says subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you're notified anytime I upload videos. Now, in today's video, like I earlier said, I'm talking about the cultural shocks that people experience when they go to UK, especially when you're coming as an international student or coming from a region that is more conservative or coming from a country that doesn't have as much facilities as seen in the UK. So now let's get into the things that made me go, hmm, okay, what's going on? The number one is that store branded products are equally as good as the name branded product, like the major branded product. Like in the UK, most of the stores like Tex Tesco, Audi, um, Lidl, Asda, most of them have their own branded products. What I mean is that if um, Coke, for example, Coca-Cola is a brand of soda. Tesco will have their own brand of soda that's cheaper and equally has good taste. So um, for me, I was used to particular brands and I get there and I'm like, okay, let me try this brand is their brand is Tesco brand. You see it, um, Tesco or Lidl, um, even though it was produced in, like they got a contract um, manufacturer to produce it for them and just put their name on it. So you see it and you'd be like, I was like, let me try it. And I'm finding out that, wait a minute, this is equally as good as the branded ones that I know and cheaper. So that's one of the ways to save money. You buy the store branded product. And I was amazed because in Nigeria, we don't have that. At least I, to the best of my knowledge, we don't have that. So that was one thing I did not know. And uh, one thing that made me go, that's nice, that's nice. Um, the second thing is that I did not realize how bad the situation of smoking in the UK is. Like, they smoked like a chimney. And I was like, what the heck? I knew that they smoked, but I did not know that it was that bad. 
it was really that bad. I for me that um I'm in the health and care profession. I really don't like the fact of, I don't like anything to do with cigarettes, especially the fact that it leads to cancer. And then I did not understand the the how bad it was or how bad secondhand smoking does to people because secondhand smoking is when someone is smoking and you are in that vicinity inhaling what they're puffing out and so i did not understand how bad that was until i did my tobacco model because i studied masters of public health and i took the tobacco control model and going through the whole process of the of the model and then seeing that secondhand smoke has over 4,000 um, chemicals that can lead to health problems, I was pissed the more. When someone smokes around me and I'm like, can you please get out of my vicinity? I don't, before I would just try and not inhale what they are bringing out by just trying to walk fast. When I knew about the whole 4,000, over 4,000 chemicals and everything and how it can also lead to cancer, I would actually let them know that you are disturbing my health status by covering my nose with my hand and just being irritated so that you know, move. Because in the UK, there are some rules. You cannot smoke in an enclosed area, but you can smoke outside. Um, so you see some people smoking when we are waiting for the bus and I'm like, is something wrong with your brain? The way they smoke is just terrible. The day I was really pissed was the day I was going to the medical library because the medical library is, a, is in the hospital and at the front of the hospital, you cannot smoke when you get next to the hospital on doors. You can only smoke outside. Um, so outside... I saw a lady pregnant with a kid in a trolley, or trolley, and she was smoking. And I was, the anger in me was just too much. I was like, what kind of rubbish? You are with, with a child that is less than three years with, you are pregnant and you are smoking. Hey! Next on my cultural shock list is the fact that they have something called double pay or pay and a half. Never heard of it before. Double pay or pay and a half, if you watch some of my videos, you would know about it. If you've not watched, it is the fact that during some certain periods, that's like the, they call it bank holiday in Nigeria, we call it public holiday, or some bank holiday or some certain periods, such as Christmas period, like Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, New Year's Eve, or New Year's Day, um, if you work, as a student, if you are working anywhere, most establishment will pay you double. That means if your salary or wage, because it's a wage, if your hourly wage is nine fifty or let's say ten pounds, during those days that you work, those are the public holidays, the bank holidays, and the other ones. Those ones are also called bank holidays, but I'm just trying to differentiate because there are other bank holidays from the christmas period so if you walk in those those if you walk during those period you will get 20 pounds per hour if your hourly wage is 10 pounds per hour or if for the a pay and a half you will get 15 so that is the 10 pounds for the one hour and half that is 15 so I did not know that. So it was quite surprising. I was like, wow, wow. <laughs> In Nigeria, they don't do that. So it was like, that's nice. That's nice. Um, the fourth one is the fact that ATM cards are given free of charge. And I don't know for anybody else that is watching this from another country but in nigeria atm cards are not given free of charge they are usually um billed to your account so you just say withdraw of one thousand and every time you request for an atm card um there was a time that i didn't know about the contactless um card 
And so when I was giving my ATM card, I was like, okay, I got it. Then my flatmate boyfriend had a contact like card. So I was like, I like that. Contact lens means that you don't have to put your pin for a certain amount of um certain amount of money if you want to spend anyway the contact lens card was so fine i was like okay i want that so i went to the bank for something else and i said can i request for that and they were like yes i'll get it in a few days and after that few, after i have um the other one had arrived the previous one i have would be invalid and i was expecting so how much for getting a new one and i was like three and i was like eh Repeat it, repeat three. The first one, because it was a student account, so I felt maybe it's part of their student package. But the second one was like free, the other one was not expired and free. That was different. So, the fifth cultural shock that I had was during Christmas period. That was the first time. Um, a friend had told me about it, but I did not realize how bad. And that is that during Christmas period and Easter period, especially that Christmas day, um, everywhere is like a dead zone. Nothing operates. No bus, no supermarket, nothing. So if you want to get anything, you have to get it before... 24th around 4 p.m. because they close early on 24th that's christmas eve or even new year's eve they close they close early and christmas day new year's day not one person the big shops the buses if you need to go anywhere you either walk or you take uber or cabs and those ones will increase the prices of their fares. So Christmas period, New Year period, that zone. And even for shops, you might see um, the smaller shops open. The ones that are called mom and pop shops or something like that, like smaller independent shops might open because they're smaller independent shops. But they are usually very rare. Not a lot of people open. So that was one thing that was, um, it was like, wow, everywhere is just quiet. Now the sixth one, which was really, really funny, but I did not know that, is the wind in UK can carry you. Recently, there was a big wind that, that people experienced in the UK and I was throwing people up and down. Well, I do not know that. I never understood um, the whole thing. Until the day I was going home, and yeah, it was getting breezy, it was about to rain, so I was going home, and then next to breeze wanted to throw me somewhere. And I'm tiny, really, I'm tiny. I'm a size, a UK size four, UK size six, US size zero, US size two. I am very, very tiny, and the wind was pushing me. What prevented me from flying was because I just went to the library. I borrowed some books, so my backpack was heavy. That was what saved me from entering a and &E because wind blew me somewhere. Now, I will not call it a cultural shock, but the, it took some time to adjust, and that is that they have bus schedules. And if you don't follow it to the T, you would stay in one place for minutes. Most cities have bus schedules. Most cities have their buses. So you have to check their website or app to know where, when and where you can get a bus to go to where you want to go to. If you don't follow the timing on it, you are in trouble. Um, During the day, it might not be so much of a an issue because okay they, i think they call the in nottingham they used to go like every they used to come to the bus stops at like every 15 minutes but in the early morning because i had to go to work i resume by 6 a.m the early hours the buses are not that regular 
the interval between each buses or the buses coming could be like 30 or one hour during the early morning so if you don't get there before the bus arrives and start standing waiting for the bus because you might sit down and the bus driver doesn't see you and just pass or you is your name at that point in time because they will speed past and they would not stop if you like the running and they see you running but yeah not at that bus stop they will not stop and that leads me to the next cultural shock I had. Some of the bus drivers are just plain, I don't understand. I won't call it rude, but I'll say more of them are just strict and just on their own. It's just so terrible. They can see you running to the bus that you want to meet. It will not stop. Very, very few will stop and allow you to enter. Very, very few. And then I noticed that they can be very annoying when it rains. You will be standing and there is a puddle. A same driver will slow down a bit when there is a puddle and people are standing or people are there. Those ones will just pass and splash you. Like, what is wrong with you people? It was really like, you're supposed to be more civilized and you cannot even slow down when you see somebody passing by a puddle. Like, oh. It was annoying. Um, the ninth one is the fact that it's not a cultural shock per se, but it's something that I had to get used to, and that's called Google Maps. I am not used to Google Maps, and I had to get used to Google Maps. Like, I would be looking at the map and getting lost. Like, how can you be looking at the map and still get lost? Well, that's me. So it took me a while to get used to Google Maps and uh, if you're not used to it, get used to it because you're going to need it a lot. A lot of them don't. In Nigeria, you ask, please, where is this place? Where is this place? But there, yeah, everybody's on their own. So use your Google Map. So the last cultural shock that I'm going to stay was not particularly my own cultural shock. It was a friend. She was so surprised to see homeless people in the UK and I'm like, why i guess because i was used to a lot of things before i came there i was not particularly shocked about that i know that no matter what there's still some places they can go to unlike nigeria where there really is no place for them in the night they can go some to ho some homeless shelters especially during the winter those homeless shelters would accommodate them in the night where it's going to be a lot colder so because i actually volunteered in some weird where um they house homeless people so in nottingham it was the manual house so i know that they do that but i understand how it could be a shock to people that are coming from where we see we view the western world most of the western um, countries as everything is perfect so when you see that you're like wait 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 Things are not that perfect, but nowhere it's perfect in my own opinion. So basically, that is all about the cultural shocks. It is different from every other person, so because I am different. Um, but I hope it allows you to understand a bit of where you're going to as an international student if you are not there already. And if you're there, do you relate to anything I just said? If you do, please leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about this whole cultural shock. And um, let us know if you have other cultural shocks in that you've experienced. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing by clicking on the red button that says subscribe. And don't forget to click on the bell notification icon by the side so that you need to find any time I upload. Videos. My next video is all about six things I think international students should know before going to the UK, before coming to the UK. So if you want to know the six things I think international students should know before going to the UK, please join me in the next one. So thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I'm